Good morning and welcome back to WBSM's weekly public affairs program, Town Square Sunday. My name is Casey Sylvia and I'll be filling in for Jim Phillips on this week's edition. Joe Thomas of Spinner Publications is a publisher, historian, and a man with great passion for telling the stories of southeastern Massachusetts and its people. Spinner has been around for 30 years, publishing a wide variety of books on everything from cranberry growing to the 1928 textile strike in New Bedford to Lincoln Park. It's a pleasure to have you here, Joe. Thank you, Casey. So how did Spinner Publications begin? Well, we began actually um, at UMass Dartmouth at SMU at the time. I had a a friend there, uh, Donna Hughes, who was doing oral history reporting with a class that she had, sociology class. I had been to UMass earlier, uh, years earlier, and so we knew each other. And I was doing documentary photography and film work, and... I had shown her work that I had done, and we talked about the idea of doing a a real publication, not just a classroom project. Uh, I had been looking to start something like that, a little magazine or or some kind of documentary work, multimedia work. So we we just talked. I went to one of her, audited one of her classes, and uh, we decided to go out and document the Rivet Street neighborhood in the Bedford South End. And um, that became the lead story of our first book published in 1981 called Visignance. So, um, you know, from from the ideas of of neighborhood story, oral history, we did a lot with uh, working people, farming, fishing, you know, working in the mills. Real New Bedford. Uh, Real New Bedford. And I, I was very interested in the story, you know, and telling the story. Currently, not not so much historical at that time. I really hadn't delved into history that much when we first started. It was really about uh, cultural, gene- genealogical even, to some degree, but mostly just stories of ethnic groups, neighborhoods, working. And uh, from there, we just grew, branched out. We sort of uh, went with, with what was popular. You know, what did people like? What were people responding to? So the oral history books lasted a few years. We don't do as much of that, although we integrate oral accounts into our documentary work. And we've been, because I think just responding to what people like, we started to focus more on history and the stories, past stories that are worth telling, but how it has shaped us who we are and where where we are and where we're going. So, for example... Uh, in this history of New Bedford, in the volume two where we cover up to 1980, we spent a lot of time looking at uh, that period between 1950 and 1980 because it really hasn't been documented or written about as much as we think it should be. So we did spend time like with the urban renewal era, building of the dike and and the expansion of the fleet, uh, industrial park, and all the things that sort of transpired between the late 50s especially, and 1980. Now we're working on volume three, and that's going to be 1980 to 2010 roughly maybe. By the time we get it done, we may bring it up to date. But um, We'll see how much fits in there. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Because I think recent history uh, gets ignored a little bit, and it's really important, and it's important to bring young people into into your market uh, and into your project because – they want to know what came before them, how they got here, but even most recently how they got here, not, you know, how we got here not 50 150 years ago, years ago. five yeah. years ago. Yeah. I think whaling and textiles, uh, you know, we've spent a lot of time on that, and it's always great to bring out those stories because there's plenty of it out there uh, to, you know, to be researched. But people also want to know about, um, you know, growing up in these neighborhoods and, you know, stitching factories and, uh, you know, the fishing industry, things that are current or more current. So we've spent, we've been spending time with that lately. Um, so that's a lot what this Blue Collars a novel that Catherine McLaughlin wrote. Uh, it's about her growing up in the 50s and 60s in the South End neighborhood. Her father worked at Berkshire Hathaway. I know Jim's going to have her on in a couple of weeks, so I don't need to spend a lot of time on that. But <laughs> cat's uh, out of the bag now. <laughs> yeah, cat's out of the bag. But it's a great. It's a well. Let me say that uh, we're encouraging writers, and I, Catherine, I, I knew her from high school myself, and when I read her work when she brought it to me almost ten years ago, probably was ten years ago when she first brought it to me, 
And uh, when I read it, I said, you know, we've got to do this. This is a novel. This is something current, you know, by a contemporary artist that, you know, her story is based in large part on historical sort of personal memoir. But it is fiction, and it is something she's written about that's very close to her, very personal. Uh, so I, I called when she uh, submitted it shortly after I approached her, and I said, you know, let's get this done. And we couldn't really get it done right away. We weren't ready for it. We had other things going. So uh, we let it go for a couple of years. And then I called her again a couple of years ago from today. And I asked her, have you ever published that book? And she said, no. And she was a little disappointed. I said, well, let's do it. You know, let's get Now it. or never, right? Let's, let's get it done. And we put a lot of work into it. And um, I had on my editorial team a young woman from Middleborough, uh, Natalie White, who really uh, worked closely with Catherine, with Catherine to develop, help her sort of clean it up, develop it, and, uh, you know, really help bring it to life. So... Uh, you know, that's what we do at Spinner. We work hands-on with our artists, our writers, photographers, whomever. So now you mentioned that you have this new book coming up. Roughly, you know, tell me how a Spinner book is put together. Who does the research? Who does the writing? Who gathers the photos, et cetera? Yeah, depending on the type of book. Usually um, uh, people come to us or sometimes we come up with the ideas. Either and way. A decade later and it comes together. <laughs> Exactly. Well, for example, we're going to do a history of fishing uh, in, in New Bedford. Now, I know a lot of people, uh, writer, writers and researchers, who are going to be part of a team, an ideal group. And that will be a team project. So we'll have five, six people maybe. Maybe maybe not. Maybe th four or three, whatever. Probably, you know, a little small handful anyway who are going to uh, – well, first, we're going to outline what we want to do. We'll, we'll draw up a – a time schedule, you know, a, um, a topical and chronological structure for the book, and then we'll assign different writers or researchers uh, what to do. And so the book will be a group project, something like that will be a group project. Uh, on the other hand, we were approached uh, less than a year ago, maybe close to that. Uh, time goes by very quickly. <laughs> And I can't always uh, put that in perspective. It takes if forever to do anything. If I say the other anything. day, it's either yesterday or two years ago. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, a group from Fall River came to see us. They were all excited about um, a discovery they made in the archives at the Fall River Herald. They found uh, these vertical files uh, with clippings and uh, tin, uh, tin plate, zinc plates and and uh, photographs and about the uh, – all the casualties of fall, from World War II specifically who were from Fall River. And they, they'd kept this file on this, you know, very um, closed group of people, Fall Riverites. And although it does include some Somerset and Westport uh, folks, but um, they wanted to, to publish it. They wanted to find out, can, can they get it published? So, you know, we went over it with them. We sort of priced it out. Um, this is a, a job that we're sort of collaborating with, put a budget together, and um, they liked what they saw and how we we're going to handle it as a, as a business plan project as well as a uh, you know creative documentary project. So now we're moving forward on that. We're going to get that done, and that's um, just a, it's, it's going to be a hardcover pictorial style book with portraits and obituaries mostly, uh, stories built on the lives of all of these people who uh, served and died. It's not, it's not, it's about those who were casualties. It's not everybody who served in mm -hmm. Fall River. It's those who gave their life for the country during the war. And for example, you know, Charles Braga in the Braga Bridge named, was named after him. So we'll feature, he's supposedly the first casualty of the war with Japan, the Pacific. Uh, he was on the, uh, one, of the, one of the battleships in Pearl Harbor. And, um, you know, so, so his story will be told through these obituaries and maybe supplemental information, but mostly built around these obituaries. Because the plan, the idea was to sort of project what people were hearing 
and learning at the time of the war. You know, so it was very important to them to maintain uh, that sense of, of, of place and time, you know. So, you know, we'll correct some mistakes and some obituaries, but mostly we're going to put that up like that, and we'll have this, this book, this anthology of people. This huge project. Yeah. How long does something like that generally take from idea to publishing? It takes at least a year. The whole process? Yeah. Well, at least a year? Yeah, sometimes they take more. These books here that, that I brought uh, for you to see, uh, History of New Bedford, Picture History of New Bedford, these two volumes, which is about 600-something pages, that took about five years. Wow. Combined, I didn't realize combined. it took that long. I mean, I'm sure yeah. just to put everything together in the first place. But Well, that's one of the things. You know, we're not a big, if we were a big publishing company, if we had the resources of a big-time publisher, we could just, you know, hire really – professional individuals who are available, by the mm -hmm. way, uh, really to work on all aspects of the project at once. But because we're small and we work with a small group, it takes a little more time. But it's worth the wait, right? I think so. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, too. <laughs> My guest is Joe Thomas of Spinner Publications, a community-based nonprofit publishing house in New Bedford. What is your favorite Spinner book? The favorite book that we have published? So far. Yeah, I have several. Go I, for it. Okay. Tell me all of them. Well, most recently, of course, I like the uh, the volume two of the picture history. I really like that book because like, we've got a lot of new original work in there, and 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 we have about a thousand photographs in that book. So that's a great, I think, project. Uh, individual titles. Um, I love doing the Strike of Twenty Eight with Dan Georgiana. That was a nice book because again, it was it was about a historical event. But it's it's framed within the context of the history of, of textiles in New Bedford, which is really good. It's a great story too, and how people of different ethnic backgrounds, particularly the Portuguese, the French Canadian, Polish, Irish, Lancashire, English, how these people uh, work together to you know stand up for their rights and to keep their jobs and so on. And, and so it's really a lot going on sociologically, historically, and photographically. There's a lot in there. So I like that. And I like the Cranberry Harvest a lot. I, I like that because I had a large part in it, and I got to spend a lot of time on the cranberry bogs. And I loved the That people. had to have been fun. Yeah, just that for the was a lot you of know, fun. Research purposes. Re research purposes. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I, I did all, most of the re research for that, and I spent a lot of time in, up at Ocean Spray and uh, down did at the— Did you put the waders on? And go in? Uh, I, yeah, I was everywhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just walked in, to tell you the truth, when I needed to, to you know, get on the bog. Um, you know, because in the fall, it's still very pleasant out. They, the, most of the picking season takes place between September and November. Mm -hmm. um, I went up in a helicopter, you know, to photograph the lifting of the, the, the crates off the bogs at, like, at Dekas, uh, some of Dekas' farm. I get to meet the... These people, the make pieces, the decuses, uh, small farmers, carver farmers, uh, carver farmers, and people like uh, Clark Griffith and the Gilmores, and so many, so many people. Uh, and I just love it. I love the people. I love the work of cranberry growing because I worked as you know as a picker when I was young. I lived in one of those little huts. So it brought you back. Room. It brought me back, and and especially senses of smell and you know of the fall the autumn and uh, the dew on in the mornings and the you know just everything about cranberries is a wonderful experience for me because you know i'm just an outsider anyway but it's just a great it was a great uh, project and nice to and and it was something close to my heart you know that i wanted to do so that was a great project I, and i like the way it came it out it sounds like a very personal project for you yeah it was. It was personal. Um, I say it was fun too. It, and uh, nothing wrong with adding work you know, and play. That's okay. And I thought it was important. It was the most important agricultural industry in Massachusetts, so we called it the history of Massachusetts cranberry growing. And my final question: What is on the drawing board for you? Well, in addition to the Fall River uh, military history, uh, we've got. Um, We've got several small projects. We have a, a book about Nantucket uh, of a family, uh, Matthew Crosby, his his uh, story of uh, 
Nantucket history through his eyes. Uh, he was a whaler and a, and a uh, merchant. Uh, this is a, a private thing, really. We're working with some authors who are sort of contracting with us to get their books done, which is something new for us in, in some way. We Usually we, you know, traditionally publishers take all the risk, spend all the money on it and pay royalties to authors. In some cases now, authors are becoming part of the sort of publishing process. And a true partner in the process. Yeah, because we can't, uh, we can't, make enough on the project we, there's not enough in sales these days to really warrant us uh, investing you know thousands of dollars mm-hmm. when we know that the book's not going to sell enough but w- but nonetheless it's important to get these projects done just because they're not going to sell a lot doesn't mean they're not important so we figured out a way to tell these prospective authors that if you get involved in the publishing, if you help raise money, because we're a nonprofit, we can do that. Uh, we can raise money different ways. Uh, then we can get your book published, and that's been working out. So we have that, and we have um, let's see the military history, the uh, Nantucket. Um, caught me off guard there. We have a, we do have a couple of others. Um, we have actually a, 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 a uh, another uh, Nantucket. We have two Nantucket books. Both of them are stories. One of them is fiction. Uh, so we're trying to also get into the field of fiction because we have the fishing book too that that we're working on. Uh, so we have several. A books. little bit of everything. Yeah, we have diff- different things going on. Joe Thomas, thanks for coming in. Good luck with Spinner over the next thirty years. 35 years. <laughs> 35 uh, years. Town Square Sunday will return in just a moment. Thank you.